Hi, welcome to the channel. It's Gene, retired in Mexico. And uh, if this is your first time to the channel, we ask one question, do they write them and sing them like they used to? So we're still exploring that question one video at a time. A lot of people, young and old, think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And we did our first poll and the results are pretty clear. People have asked me to hit up the band Swans. Now I gotta tell you, I know Swans, okay? I'm familiar with them and I wanted to show you that I do own a CD by them. So this is uh, Cop, Young God, Greed, and Holy Money, which were four EPs. But I'm actually a fan of the reformed Swans. So, you know, the, when the Swans came out in the early, mid 80s, uh, you know, the only other band that I can think of that was kind of on my radar at the same time was Ministry. So those were the two bands that I, I was aware of. And then there were other bands like Skinny Puppy or Nitzereb that were doing things, but I wasn't that familiar with them. And I, I look back at that period of the Swans and I like it, you know, but I think he was a little sensational, and I kind of like the Reform Swans, where the music still has the intensity, but maybe he scaled back the lyrics just a, a touch. I mean, when you write a song called Raping a Slave, right? It was a little extreme at the time, I remember, and a lot of people were like, what the hell? So, um, I've always, yeah, obviously I wouldn't own a CD if I wasn't a fan. Uh, but when they reformed in 2010, I became a, a much bigger fan of Swans. And so this album, To Be Kind, I've listened to it, uh, but I do not remember the song that I'm going to feature today. It's a song called Oxygen. The first song is called Screenshot, and that was on a playlist of mine on Spotify, and so I'm used to hearing Screenshot a lot. But I found this uh, live video. It's all filmed in black and white. It looks pretty intense. I thought I'd hit that up today. So thanks for everyone for voting on the poll. And if your choice didn't win, we may still hit that band up. But for today, we're going to do Swans. And I've pulled up the lyrics to do a deep dive. One thing I wanted to show you here on, on Wikipedia is Anna Wilson of Clash praised the album, describing it as Carl Stockhausen's jarring classicism, Captain Beefheart's twisted blues, and the industrialism of Einstein and Neubauten. So I'm a big fan of all three of those, and they're all three in my collection. In fact, I've got, I couldn't find my Captain Beefheart. I may have it down at the record store. I'm selling a little bit of my collection, but Here's a Einstein's and a Neubaut, and I've got three of their CDs here, including 2x4, which was on the Roar record label, which is a really cool thing to have in my collection. So this one's, a, this one's all about medical treatment <laughs> and the lack thereof, and this is their anthology, um, Strategies and Architecture, the first one. So uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. And I have some Stockhausen back here in my uh, classical. I keep it with my classical music. And then, like I say, I don't know where the Captain B part's at. But let's go ahead and hit this up, and then we'll do a deep dive into the lyrics. Now, I did read the synopsis on this, and it's about his asthma and the feelings that he had when he couldn't breathe, hence the title, Oxygen. So let's go ahead and hit this up. <laughs> Already very dark. Very dark. Those drumsticks. Very cool. So six people. So just one note, just that one riff. That one riff, that's what they like to do. Nicely filmed. Okay. Rhythm section kicking in. And you still got that one two note riff or whatever it is.
Yeah, I don't remember this song at all, even though I'm sure I've heard it. Feedback. I don't know if that's intentional or accidental. dark. The black and white is perfect with it. Camera shaking a little bit. I mean it's a nice video. You can tell it's a little low budget. But still very nice. And I usually stop the video once or twice to help from blocking because I don't know. I, I tried to find a live source. I saw a performance of this on Pitchfork. I don't know if they block. But the lyrics are hard to understand. And so we'll definitely do a deep dive. Um, let's see, just real quick. He's singing about oxygen. Should you lose some oxygen? Oh, check your lung. Oxygen, amen. Oxygen, amen. I can breathe again. I can breathe again. Oxygen, I come in, come in. Oxygen, I am coming. All right, so let's uh, let's keep going with this. Oh, it just it's so minimal, isn't it? And they talk about uh, no wave movement as being a influence. And I remember the no wave movement. I had I bought a little bit. I remember buying a CD by Teenage Jesus and the Jerks, which is uh, yeah, very no wave, and all those people like. Uh, James Chance and Arto Lindsay. I've listened to all that stuff. and So I'm, I'm aware of the minimalist approach here that uh, you don't hear a lot of melody, right? But that's okay. you got a mood. Let's keep going. Drums very minimal, very tribal almost, right? Guitars coming in now. I mean, more guitar. Squeal and feedback. I can breathe. I can breathe, I can breathe again. That music's kind of suffocating, isn't it? It's perfect. Silence. I presume they're not done. Here we go. Small audience, huh? I still love the oxygen. Camera shaking again. Oh, the drummer. So I read at one point that he liked rhythms that reminded him of slave ship galleys, if you can believe that. So since that was before the time we recorded music, we'll just have to imagine 
what those sounded like, but you know, they beat out the drum just for people to have a rhythm to row. I mean, ugh, right? Glad we're out of those times. Those guitar chords give it some color and some interest, otherwise it would be so minimal. He's got a lot of charisma. little extra interest in the drums, picking up a little pattern now, some fills. But we're still on that, we're on that same riff they started with, very consistent. different things now. Drums. Drums still picking up some extra patterns. And now they're playing with the tempo, right? Slowing down the tempo. Gives it that dirge-like quality. And you can hear the industrial influence when they talk about Einsters and Neubauten or Thriving Gristle or those great 80s industrial bands. More in the mood because you, you don't hear, you know, trash cans or, or drill presses or the different kinds of uh, factory instruments or sheet metal or things like that, but, but you get that industrial feeling, you know, that vibe. Wow. These guys know how to create a mood. They should have a bigger audience. Thank you. And he sang with a lot of intensity on that song. Let's jump over to the lyrics. We read the first part. And uh, let's see here. Let me get out of that. So he says in verse 2, black oil smoke. Oh, by the way, he said when he quit smoking, his asthma got better. I read that and I thought, duh, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it, you know. But uh, black oil smoke, thick blue sky, dead red eye, hear me cry, eat my throat, feed my mind, yellow eye, feel me cry, take me now, peel my skin. So that's classic Swan's lyrics there. I mean, on the one hand, do you have to go to peel and skin when you're talking about asthma? But on the other hand, he's talking about an emotion here. Scrape my veins, seal me in, break my bone, dance and spin, cut a hole, feed me now. I'll steal all the oxygen. Cut a hole, that makes you think about when they do a tracheotomy, huh? La 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 la. 
So I see verse 2 as he's expanding this. So verse 1 was personal about I can't breathe. Oh, now I can breathe. And now he's talking about black, uh, black oil smoke, thick blue sky. You're thinking pollution, right? So now he's talking about the, the larger world and how it's hard to breathe in the larger world. Or at least that's how I take the lyrics. I could do a deep dive here, but I don't think it's going to tell me much. Let's see. Uh, a continuation of Gira's frantic desperation during the asthma attack, particularly the last line in which he not only begs for but demands that the oxygen he craves feed him. He wants the oxygen to fill his body once more just as food fills the stomach. Well, I don't know how you got that out of here. Annotation's usually pretty good. Sometimes it's a little random. Um, no, nah, nothing, nothing there. So let's go to the third verse. Hey there, dog man. Let's see what dog man might mean. The narrator's asthma attacks are so intense that they make him suffer of near-death experience. He portrays this through him drinking of the dog man's bowl. The dog man could represent Cerberus, the mythical three-headed dog, guardian of hell. The narrator isn't dead. He isn't in hell, but just outside with Cerberus. And if I'm mispronouncing that, sorry. This ties up nicely with the next line referring Mr. Skull or the devil. So, hey there, dog man, woof, 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 woof. Now I drink from your bowl, hello. Ruff, 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 ruff. Hey there, Mr. Skull, I'm not scared of your cull. Well, there's a rhyme that actually makes sense, huh? It's a nice rhyme. Oxygen, oxygen. Skin tight, skin tight, brick house, brick house, oxygen, amen. Yeah, I can imagine that feeling. Oxygen, amen, breathe in, breathe in. So I think it's a pretty simple lyric. He's just talking about an experience. But you know, this th it's so cool because he has this asthma attack and then he sees it as an opportunity to write a song that completely fits with their motif, right? So you got the minimalist, no wave, industrial claustrophobic that's a good word for these guys these guys are very claustrophobic and how do you feel when you have an I've never had an asthma attack but I have a I have friends who have or a friend that has a peanut allergy who came that close to dying and he's talked about it to me that he thought he was gonna die and uh, the paramedics arrived just in time to give him a he didn't have an EpiPen on him, and uh, they brought him back just in the nick of time, but he was probably a couple minutes away from dying. So I think this is a, just an awesome uh, use of taking a personal story that happened to him, weaving it into the themes of the band, and it fits perfectly on this album. I do not remember the song. But I, I liked, so I liked his intensity. That was great. And he was doing those so, sort of unorthodox moves, right? You know, he's no Prince or Michael Jackson, but he's got his own stage moves that work for him. And he's got a presence and he's singing with a lot of ferocity. And then the band, they just stay on this beat, but they do change tempos. And I think that helps the song a lot. Uh, it, it, it slows down and speeds up and it's great and then those guitar just one note or two note guitar riffs just ringing distorted guitar riffs that came in around the middle middle ish uh, just add a lot of interest to a otherwise bare bones song so primal drumming simple bass uh, ringing guitars and ferocious vocal and great lyrics. So, yeah, I give this a, an A, I think. Um, and like I said, I'm a much bigger fan of the reformed Swans. I'm not exactly sure why, but like I say, I think some of the early material, I think it was shocking for shocking sake. And now in the postmodern era in the 21st century, I'll just close with this. You see the word shocking all the time, like I 
I'll read headlines. And, and it'll be something stupid. It'll be like, uh, you know, Amber Heard shockingly removed from film role or something. It's like, well, I'm not shocked, okay? It takes a lot more than that to shock me. It's one of the most overused words. But, but we're in a very needy attention getting society. And we were in the 80s too when they did uh, those early swan songs and just trying to get a, a leg up. And I think, you know, I do think sometimes the swans, they were musically brilliant, but time, sometimes lyrically maybe a little over the top, in my opinion. You know, looking back on it at the time, people I think were a little more genuinely shocked at the time. But you look back on it now and you go, oh, I think he's just looking for uh, some sati- sensational edge to get uh, to get the band more attention. But uh, he's dialed it back just a notch, and I think that's perfect for the band. But musically, they have not let up on their intensity at all. So thanks for this recommendation. I uh, really appreciate it, guys. That was our first poll, and it was really fun to do. And, and I, I'm noting, and we'll keep the poll open for... I don't know, another day, maybe. So you can jump in there and make some other votes. Uh, Look for a second place contender. All right. So as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.